Hi guys, welcome back. Queen Osset here. Oh, these past few weeks have been um, quite intense on the interwebs and YouTube and within our little community, <laughs> have they not? Um, some of us have chosen to speak up and some of us have chosen to allow things to wash over us. Um, this is where, you know, free will and free speech really comes into play. You can chime in or not. But I have learned that sometimes not everything warrants a response, especially if the response is coming from a place where you don't have all the information. Anyway, um, cosmologically with this waxing moon, I'm hoping that a lot of the... Um, Negativity and ill feelings and instability will finally start to settle down as we move forward into a full moon in Aries. Um, I think maybe a lot of this energy was coming from the resistance of the stabilization of the Virgo new moon, especially after experiencing the eclipses in Leo and Aquarius a month back. But today, let's go ahead and do a check-in and see where we are in regards to manifestation, working with the moon energy, you know, embracing all of that that's supposed to be coming into us as we move into the full moon. Now, of course, one of the things I had told you I was going to do in my previous video is set my lights and have them burning, focusing on what it is I want to bring in during this moon cycle. Um, by burning my candles for nine minutes each day. So I'm going to show you what they look like. Let's see. Just a second. Okay. So this is what I have set up right now. My chime candles. This is my moon candle. And then these candles on the outside represent what it is that I want to bring in. This is actually my third or fourth set. I switched out a green for a white considering all the active Cosmo energy that's been going on. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've been mourning um, a kindred spirit, um, mystique. And this is for communication so that our communication becomes very clear and truthful. Of course, the brown candle is for stability. The orange candle is representation of me and my passion and my desire. So that's my candle work that I've been doing. I'll put that over there. And of course I talked about planting some seeds and so I planted three seeds in a large pot. I figured they need some room and I've also been doing some working around on this plate as well. I'll discuss that later on as we progress. But I am really, really excited about working with the moon in all of her cycles. So for the past couple of days, today actually is the last day where the moon will be in crescent. Is it crescent formation? Crescent mood? Well, she'll be crescent in Scorpio. And Scorpio deals with um, death and regeneration and all of this stuff coming to the surface. So we have a few more hours left with the crescent moon in Scorpio. So let's go ahead and get some stuff cleaned up because the next phase is moving into Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is all about adventure, um, going out there if you're single, reconnecting with people, reconnecting with your loved ones if you're in, in you know, part of a couple. Um, this is about excitement. So this weekend, in spite of the weather that we're going to be dealing with even grasp the energy of the hurricane um, to cleanse and replenish um, to move forward you know the ocean is ruled by the movement of the moon so i know that there are many people who are saying florence go away florence don't do this to us all of that everything is all interconnected mother nature is going to do what mother nature does best you know sometimes things are just so unruly and big mama has to come in and say 
time out. You need something else to focus on. Let's come together as a community and send healing and prayers and help to those of us who are going to be in the path of Hurricane Florence. Let's get outside of this place where we're so focused on our own personal feelings in regards to whatever may be going out there and step into coming together as the human race to bring healing. You know, let's get out of the selfish place that we've been occupying for, I know, for the past two weeks. Um, as I said, it's been un unbelievable what's been going on with the Instagram and YouTube and, you know, authenticity and cultural appropriation. I'm going to speak on that. Um, all of this, at the end of the day, you know, when Hurricane Florence blows through your town, no matter where you are, do you really think any of that matters? So I'm going to pause for just a minute to grab some paperwork because I want to take a look at this new moon, or rather new moon waxing crescent moon energy. And let's go ahead and do a spread, a check-in, just to see where we are, to see if our intentions, you know, have any validity, if they are growing any roots. Just energetically restabilize ourselves, you know, take a breath and just relax. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just want to get some paperwork. Um, so as I said, the new moon is moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is in my fifth house, which is ruled by Leo. And you might want to see where Sagittarius rules your house. Um, for me, the Sagittarian energy, it encourages me to be a risk taker to be a bit more adventurous to get out and about and make new connections so i might go ahead and take advantage of that energy this moon time um i think in my last video i'm not really sure if i if i did that but i did speak on ethany's going to ethany's site and she has a pdf that you can download for personal use for each of the moon cycles new and full with spreads. You might want to add that to your collection. It's something I really enjoy using. Also, um, I found, you know, doing my research, I found a Jessica Demas, and she has a website called Dwell in the Magic, and it focusing all, it focuses all on manifestation done with the moon cycles. Um, I bought a PDF from her and she has different spreads, different journal prompts, things that you can do, ritualistic things that you can do um, to really tap into the energy of the moon. While I am still in love with this book, I am fickle. It gives me some good ideas and good prompts, but I think I'm stepping more into what Jessica is providing for me. I'll put a link to her website down there. Also, you know, for each moon phase that she has, she has you doing so many things. Um, new moon magic, waxing moon, full moon, um, waning moon, and I really just find it very, very informative. So hopefully the next time that I come back on I'll have a binder because she even has instructions for how she sets up her her, her binder for um, manifestation work and I really just want to get into that as I said I'm a novice at this I'm a newbie at this so you all are with me on this journey and we'll see what happens a year from now who knows okay so I'm also going to put a link down below for um, a few astrological websites I think that you can go ahead and pull your natal chart if you don't have that already because I do think that that would help I also have I've been busy another book that I had gotten and it's called manifesting with the moon and this was put out by goddess life design and she uses what we call smart approach to goal setting 
And in this book, let's see, SMART stands for um, anything that begins with S. Specific, sexy, simple. So quick reference for the acronym SMART. Is my goal specific, sexy, simple, sensible, and significant to my life desires? For M, am I motivated by my goal? Is it meaningful and measurable? A, am I able to take action towards my goal and fully believe it is attainable? R, is my goal or my goal is resonating well with my life and desires? Is it relevant, realistic? Are the resources available to me for, or do I know how I can obtain them? Um, in a, the appropriate time frame, and is it results based? And T, my goal is time based and timely, time sensitive, time limited, and aimed towards my desires. So I really like that acronym because you can really focus in on what it is that you want to do. And with this book, and I think I might have to purchase the book for 2019. She has the lunar alignment. Can I get this in there? Broken down for each new moon phase. She goes in to talk about um, the areas of focus. Meditate on the affirmations and journal how you feel. Let's say, um, I'm always desiring for the highest good of all humanity. I am physically well. I love my body because, and then you fill in, I love my body because it allows me to connect here with you right now. And in spite of the challenges that I may endure, it's still a good time to be alive. Um, to show more love to my body, I can eat healthier, drink more water. I'm drinking some now. That's lemon water, good for detoxifying, clearing your body. I am financially stable and that feels amazing because, and then you fill in the blank. I am balanced within all aspects of my life. And for the whole moon cycle, she gives you the dates. I mean, everything is in here. So it's a workbook and something that I'm going to be uh, tapping into. Let's see, um, and it goes all the way through to, of course, the end of the year. Um, but she does have in here things that you can do for each particular moon. So here we are at the crescent moon. Let's see, and she says for the crescent moon, some of your journal prompts could be, I truly take time to relax and journal my feelings on what my desires feels like as I already manifested in my life. I allow myself to daydream on this moment in time. I feel my inner goddess power in connection with the divine. I remind myself to take a few moments out of my day here and there just to observe all my senses and breathe. I cleanse my life of toxic relationships, old clutters, and work situations. Yes, I've been doing that purposely, intentionally. Um, words of wisdom, you know, from Dr. Wayne Dyer. Now, if this is your philosophy, you, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Sonia Coquette, Christina Northrup, um, Lisa Michaels, I listen to everyone. There's always a nugget or something that you can grasp from these people that provide some nourishment. I never have just fell into one school of thought. Um, let's see. Wow. Um, I make sure my entire being is cleansed of all that is not serving my highest good and desired life design. My mind becomes more relaxed and focused and clear. Now my desire has the attention and space to manifest as real. I am in a self-love phase. I allow myself to relax and regenerate. I am treated with love and respect. So this is a guidebook that 
I think I'm going to probably I'll see if I can find the link, but it's just one of those that I just really find fascinating, you know. Um, really focus on what it is that you'd like to have in your life and you create that. She talks about developing your goals, three, six, nine months. Okay, so one of my goals, I'm going to share this, guys, with you. One of my goals, and anyone knows that I love Black Panther, and I am seriously in love with Winston Duke, you know, the guy who played Umbaku. And I put it out in the universe that I would like to meet this young man one day. So that is something I'm hoping to manifest in my life within the next year. I would like to meet Winston Duke, a.k.a. Umbaku, within the next year. And I'll let you guys know if that happens. Okay, so now on to the moon moving into Sagittarius. I'm going to give you a little bit, bit little, can't speak today, a little bit more information on how to work with this energy. And again, I think this is another book. And as we progress, I think I'm going to hone down or cull down the books that I really will be working with at this time. You know, I'm in that Virgo moment. I just want to look at everything and get all the knowledge that I can and then I'll go ahead and put it all together and then I can go ahead and, and work from there. Okay, so we have uh, navigate your day with the moon in Sagittarius. So hopefully you can use some of this information through the weekend. We got out of Scorpio. We're moving out of Scorpio. and We saw all that, I'm going to say inappropriate energy at play uh, for the past two weeks. I do not like when my necklaces are skewed. Is that a, that must be an OCD sort of thing. Anyway, I'm not going to claim that. I just like to look a certain way. And yes, we're going to talk about aesthetics and authenticity. Anyway, navigate your day with the moon in Sagittarius. <laughs> um, what to watch out for? Wonderlust. Yes, we need to explore. Just think twice before dropping work and walking off into the sunset. Tactlessness. Well, I've never been known for my tact, so I guess I have to be mindful this weekend. I guess it's a good thing I'm off from work. Forgive the grandmother who <laughs> blurts out that she hates your haircut. Our filters go down and we speak what's on our mind. Say it like it is, but make sure it's not only true, but necessary and kind. And let's see, we have a need for freedom. Do not act possessively towards loved ones. Give them room to roam and they will love you for it. Conversely, don't run away and join the circus when all you really need is a walk around the block. If you join the circus, send me a postcard, okay? Also, Sagittarius moon energy, it invites silliness. So, yeah, you know, let's lighten up, people. It really is not that deep. Sagittarius brings a lighthearted break between two heavy moon signs. We need the comic relief. We need to laugh and hear bitter truths with humor. But not everybody can take the teasing, so use tact. All right? Break routine. Take exercise. Travel down a street you don't normally take. Uh, stop at an unusual coffee house. I'd like to hear what you guys did after this weekend. This is your challenge for this weekend. And don't forget to take a moon bath, whether you can see her in the sky or not. Her energies are there. You should begin to see a little sliver wherever you are. Step outside and lift your face up. And you know, taking that moon energy so that when we get to the full moon, you're not feeling so overwhelmed. You're ready to go. You're feeling enervated and charged and ready to go. So what I'd like to do is let's do a check-in spread, shall we? I've got a couple of them here that I want to do. Just check in. Huh. So I found this one called Daily Energy Spread from Vix, the new age hipster, and it's just a quick daily check-in, something that you can use yourself, and it's only two cards. Card number one is the energy you are in, and this card will help you work out the energy that you're in and what forces are at play today. 
and card number two, how to navigate through this energy. This card will let you know how you can work with the energy around you in the best way possible. Okay? And then I have this other spread, and I don't know where it came from, but it's a, a new moon spread. So we're still in that new moon phase. And you can still tap into that. Three questions. What should my next project be? Card number two, how can I improve the incubation period? And card number three, who can I ask for help? And the reason why I wanted to do this spread is because Ezzy Spencer talks about yin and yang energy. And unfortunately, I'm not familiar with how that applies to the moon cycle. I feel as the moon is growing, it's more of a, a yang energy. I think it becomes more active. And then as she's waning, it becomes more yin. But that's my feeling, personal observation. It may be incorrect, but that's my personal observation. Um, that's my connection with the moon. You know, my moon is an Aquarius. So when the moon is growing, I become more active. I become more excited. But then I also wind down. I become more settled. Maybe when she's waning, I start to discharge. And when she's dark, I actually start to power back up. I don't know. I'll figure it out as we go along. Anyway, let's do this quick check-in. So, whew, first card. It's Friday, September 14th. And this week, for me, I guess, as an empath, many of us, a lot of us, pretty much all of us are empaths on some level. If you're human, <laughs> and I'm hoping mostly humans are watching this right now, this week, more so than any other, you felt something on some level. Um, you may not even be able to define it, okay? But I really feel that what you may have been tapping into was the collective consciousness on a global level. Um, it has been 17 years since 9-11. And this is one of the few years that it really hit me hard. So um, I had to work on disconnecting and detoxing and getting myself settled. But I'm back. You know, you do what you have to do. Self-care is vitally important. There's nothing wrong with disconnecting when you feel Everything's just overwhelming. Again, as I said, not everything requires a response one way or the other. Sometimes you just need to be neutral about a thing. Okay, so daily energy spread. The energy that I'm in right now, forces at play. Let's see where we are. Pull up. Oh, seven of Pentacles. I did say that I was off this weekend. So my energy right now is one where I did say about settling down, being patient, right? It's time for me to ponder, be inactive and just wait. You know, there's nothing I can do to rush the process. Nothing happens before it's time. It's also time for me to assess, maybe do some pruning, some more cleaning up, you know, to make sure if there's anything lingering around that may impede the growth of my investments, go ahead and continue to clean that up. Um, things are happening as they should, you know, Mother Nature, spirits, the universe, they work in their time. I think that with this card, I am actually in alignment with the movement of the moon cycle. So that's a good energy for me to be in right now. What of contemplation, rest, just allowing things to unfold as they should. And how can I navigate through this energy? I wonder if I answered that already with the first question. All right, let's see. Let's see if it confirms or is in conflict with what I just said. How to navigate through this energy? And as I said, 
This card will let you know how I can work with the energy around me the best way possible. All right. How to navigate through this energy? Well, Hierophant. Hmm. How to navigate? Well, you know, the Hierophant speaks to Virgo. Um, sitting still. You know, um, again, I think, you know, this is the teacher. Um, this is what I call, it's a passive energy in my mind. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Besides just sitting there and just relaxing, allowing others to take care of me. Um, I've earned where I am. Sometimes I just said that. Not everything requires a response. And maybe the Herophon energy is asking me to, you know, continue with my discernment, um, be observant of all sides of everything that's going on and just basically relax about things you know maybe there is nothing that I'm supposed to do other than what I am doing right now okay so you know I always like to pull an oracle card to wrap up for the final message and I have I have some I have an oracle deck sitting right here beside me and it's called the Tree of Life Oracle. I just grabbed it because it's sitting right here on the shelf. Let's see. What message does it give me? Something you might look into. This is a deck that was put out by Schiffer Publishing. Put out a while ago. These are the backs of the cards. They look like tree bark. This is one of the cards here, and I had to put the numbers down there because, you can see that one, 22, they're not in order in the book. Um, I don't know. Anyway, let's pull a card. All right, so give me a message. Give us a message to work with this energy right now. What message? What advice? What guidance? Oh boy. Hmm. Let's see. Bonsai. And let's see. That's card number. Hmm. Card number 28. And my birthday is on the 28th. Every time I see that number, I always, I get excited. I feel like that is a direct message for me. And since I'm doing this, cultivation. Refinement, discipline, action, intelligence, poise, conformity, restriction, intolerance. That's the reverse of it. Let's see. Tree of Life. Um, you are a work of art and cultivating yourself is very important right now. This is the message for all of us. Bonsai card asks you to find ways to cultivate in yourself the traits you admire and the habits you think will help you most in your life. You do not have to conform. You can be different, even to the point of being eccentric. Careful dedication and focus will help shape you into your best form so that you can define yourself through your own unique sense of poise and grace. That's a little bizarre. Um, the Tree of Life Bonsai is all about getting you into shape by understanding that you are pure, raw, natural material that has unlimited potential. With discipline and care, you can become whatever you choose. You may need to go through a planned course of action, or you may need to study over time in order to reach your goals. It is going to take a long, thoughtful consideration to shape yourself into being who you most want to be. 
but it will be well worth it if you take the time to give yourself what you need. And see, I think both of these cards speak on that as well. Take the time, nothing happens, plan, so that I can become my best self. Hmm. Don't be afraid to cut out anything that hinders your development and know about careful management. Um, and know that careful management is required. So remember I had said here, you know, maybe to cut away anything that may impede my growth. Mm, okay, so the Tree of Life bonsai may also speak to you about being too restricted at times. Do you get annoyed when others let their hair down or do you think others who are not as cultivated as you may be a problem? Not everyone has benefited from extraordinary attention and grooming or so <laughs> they may not have all you have received in life. The Tree of Life Bonsai asks you to avoid being so overly precious as it can lead you to self-serving vanity. Again, allow yourself to be wild and crazy now and then. What I say about the moon in Sagittarius? Um, if you have been well taken care of by others, and helped along your way to becoming an outstanding specimen. Thank those who have helped you, either inwardly or in person. Wow. At the same time, if you have been deemed an, un, an ornament to fulfill the expectations of others to the point of self-sacrificing your own internal essence of being, you may consider ramifications of breaking tradition and going your own way. It may seem wild and unruly, but it might just be what you need. Oh, how do I navigate through this energy? So this is about tradition and holding space and, you know, I just say allowing others to take care of me and all that, which is something that I don't ordinarily do, but it's also encouraging me to break free. I think I'm going to have to think on this for a little bit as well. The hair font doesn't always come up as an energy for me to cultivate, but I feel that I perhaps need to loosen up a little bit more. I don't know. Um, have a little fun. Try to be a bit more fun loving. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.